So let's start by opening up Pro Tools. I'll find it down here in my dock and give it a minute to boot up. It doesn't take a while, it depends on the speed of your computer and actually how many plugins you've got installed. It'll scan through them all before it actually opens up. So this takes us straight to the dashboard. Uh, dashboard is where you can create a new Pro Tools session, open up a recent session, or access a project. Now, project is what Avid refers to for its online backed up uh, system uh, projects, uh, where you can keep everything on the cloud, you can uh, collaborate with other people at the same time. And that's actually what the sign in option up at the top right is for as well. We're not going to be covering that on this course, uh, maybe in a follow up course. Uh, because you'd need to actually have an Avid account and pay for the storage space. You get a certain amount for free when you actually buy Pro Tools, but it's not really enough to do that much. So I'll keep it set to local storage. I'll give this a name. I'll call it my first PT session. And you can see we have an option as well of creating from a template this gives us a number of preset tracks and even some sequences are thrown in there as well for good measure. Um, they can be useful, I guess, and if you're first exploring Pro Tools for yourself, then go ahead and have a closer look. But if you really want to understand what's going on, you're going to be better off doing everything manually. So file type. Uh, we have two file types available to us. You can see it's currently set to BWF, which is just a fancy version of WAV file. It's the broadcast WAV file. Uh, you can see we've also got an option here of AIFF. Uh, honestly, simple rule for this, use WAV or BWF whenever possible because everything can deal with these files. You're never going to have any compatibility issues. Sample rate. Um, it's set here to 48 kilohertz. This is what I tend to use. You can see my current audio interface actually allows me to go up all the way to 96 kilohertz. But to tell you the truth, there's very rarely a reason to actually bother with this. It just takes up twice as much processing power to make your computer do anything. 44.1 uh, kilohertz used to be a pretty common standard. It was the uh, sample rate used by CD. But these days, CD is rarely the final delivery media. You're going to be dealing with uh, videos and MP3s. Particularly video uh, in mind is why I use 48 kilohertz, because that is the standard video sample rate. And it just means you're never going to have uh, any real compatibility issues with this. So stick to 48 kilohertz, 24-bit WAV file. Uh, the other settings on here are kind of uh, unique to Pro Tools. We've got I.O. settings. We'll have a look at this in just a moment. But I'm going to put this to Stereo Mix, which is a, a default which will kind of do the job for us. We'll be tweaking this to match the exact audio interface and everything I've got connected. There's a tick box here for interleaved as well. Uh, make sure this is ticked, otherwise when you bounce down files, you end up with a left file and a right file rather than one stereo file, uh, which is a little annoying at times. Um, there's not really any occasion you're going to come across where you want them de-interleaved, so leave that ticked on. I'll also leave prompt for location selected so I can tell Pro Tools where I want it to save my project. Sorry, not project, a session. Project, as we said earlier, is the cloud-based name. Small distinction, but one it's important to get right. I'll hit Create. I'll navigate to where I want to save this. Now, we'll talk about where you should save sessions a little later on. Um, I'm saving this right now. As you can see, this is on my desktop. Um, it's not actually the ideal place to keep things, but we'll come to this in a later video. It's just kind of convenient whilst I'm quickly throwing these videos together. So hit Save, and Pro Tools creates a new session. Um, just a little tweak to make here. You can see this is actually set up for almost um, laptop size. Um, I'm going to hold the Option key and click on the green dot up in the top left. And as well as making my uh, circle go a little slower for some reason, uh, what this does is it fills the uh, screen without going into full screen mode so I can still access my top bar. So that should pretty much get you started with Pro Tools. So uh, yeah, follow the same steps and meet me in the next video.